Stand by for the most extraordinary chain of events ever swept up into high adventure. Hey, Larry, where's the forklift? Forklift! It's over there for the baggage loader. Airplane. Airplane is drama. Uh, this is Dr. Brody at the Mayo Clinic. There's a passenger on your Chicago flight 209 or a little girl named Lisa Davis en route to Minneapolis. She's scheduled for a heart transplant. I want you to make sure that she's kept in a reclined position and that a continuous watch is kept on her IV. Airplane is action. Airplane is romance. I love you, Elaine. I love you. Airplane is music. There is only one river. There is only one sea. Airplane is dancing. Never has the screen been so big. You ever been in a cockpit before? No, sir, I've never been up in a plane before. Peter Graves. You ever seen a grown man naked? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. My name is Roger Murdoch. I'm an airline pilot. Leslie Nielsen. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. Lloyd Bridges. Johnny, what can you make out of this? This? Why well, I could make a cap. Or a brooch, or pterodactyl, could you get on Robert Stack. All right, Steve, let's face a few facts. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your flight. Julie Haggerty. By the way, is there anyone on board who knows how to fly a plane? Can you fly this plane and land it? Robert Hayes. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Come down. Get a hold of yourself. Please, let me handle this. Calm down, now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this guy. Calm down, get a hold of yourself. Don't be one of the phone. Everything's been pulled. Mayday! Mayday! The most incredible adventure the screen has ever created. He's coming right at us! The big news is... Airplane. In the basement of one of the country's leading medical schools, Dr. Edward Jessup, candidate for a Nobel Prize, is conducting the most dangerous experiment in the history of science. And the subject of the experiment is himself. Ask him what kind of an experience I can expect. Out. What happens during these blackout periods is you get the feeling of phenomenal acceleration, like you're being shot out over millions, billions of years. Time simply obliterates. You guys are shooting off with an untested drug that stacks up in the brain and works in the nucleus of the cell, and you don't call that dangerous. Now, I'm asking you to put the experiment off until we understand a little more in order to there minimize the no risk. Way. I'm really frightened. We could be screwing around with this whole genetic structure. Now, how do we stop this? We've got millions of years stored away in that computer bank we call our minds. We have got trillions of dormant genes in us, our whole evolutionary past. Perhaps I've tapped into that. He may be on to something that is beyond our own comprehension. Now, because I believe him, I want this thing stopped. The hell was that? You okay? If you love me, if you love me, Eddie, defy it!
altered states. Julian K. So what do you expect? His business is pleasure. Hello, Judy. You're a very sexy lady. Very good looking woman. You can like me. You can tell. We have a lot of fun. He is the American gigolo. Hello, girls. How about you? How do you get pleasure? How do you do it, Julian? How do you seduce all these women? Please think you're involved in a murder in Palm Springs a week ago. I'm being framed by somebody. Don't know. You've been identified, Julian. But I am in deep trouble. I think you're guilty of sin. Richard Gere, Lauren Hutton, American Gigolo. from every which way they can, any which way they can, cause they're on to a sure thing. Clinton Clyde are back in any which way you can. Breaker, breaker, one nine. there's your good news channel. It's on, the fight is on! Faster, funnier, and feistier than ever. <laughs> hey, Beto, it's on! Right turn, Clyde. He's big. Yeah, he's sizable. He said he beat everybody in the Marine Corps. I ain't a Marine. Clint is one tough dude who won't be trifled with most of the time. There's one too many women in your life. I think I love you. And neither will Clyde. Come back here with my Oreos, yes. Well, now they're up against it one more time. Oh, you're gonna pay for this. You're gonna pay. They're bashing barroom bully boys. Clyde, scrap the caddy. Get out! They're mauling malicious mobsters. And they're battling bizarre bikers. All right, then, let's start doing some stomping of our own. And most of all, facing down the meanest mangler. It's a fight, it's on. The brawniest brawler of them all. The fight's on. One Jack Wilson. It's the most knuckle-busting, gut-wrenching, brain-scrambling, butt-bruising, lip-splitting brawl of all time. It's a fight to remember. Clint Eastwood turned you every which way but loose before. <laughs> Now you can bet he'll do it again. See him and the whole gang. Baby. Any which way you can. It's a sure thing. Any which way you can. Thank you. 
present to you this evening the greatest chick shooter <laughs> the fastest draw stick him up or I'll plug you are you really the fastest guy in the world ain't nobody faster than Bronco Billy you think you're faster than I am well I wouldn't want to find that out sheriff why, aren't you Bronco Billy the fastest in the West? I could outdraw you any day in the week. Bronco Billy, you're nothing. The toughest hombre! Are you finished with your little speech? Yeah, I'm finished. I do not work for you, and if you ever raise your voice to me again, I will scratch out your eyes! <laughs> 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 Well, when did you feel it was time to take action? Well, it's always time to take action when there's danger. Tell them we're gonna rob a train. Okay, Billy. Rob a train? The one and only! Here we are in Bronco Billy. Why, he's Bronco Billy, the best friend a man ever had. Bronco. Bronco Billy. I love you, Bronco Billy. Don't you understand what Bronco Billy and the Wild West Show are all about? You can be anything you want. All you have to do is go out and become it. Bronco Billy McCoy! Although Wakefield is admittedly an imperfect institution. Much like America herself. She is nonetheless a grand experiment. I am. I am the man. I'm the new warden here. My name is Henry Brubaker. I figure most of you guys belong here. Basically, you don't have any respect for other people or yourselves. What do you think of our new warden? I'm trying to get a fix on what his first order of business here is going to be. Blow the place up. He's dangerous. What the hell's the matter with you? You mean to tell me you're charging for medical attention? Get your hands off me! You start wars and you let other people fight them. Do not come marching in here from wherever the hell she found you and presume to lecture us about how to treat our fellow man. There must be over 200 of them out there. Abraham, are you talking about the bodies that are supposed to be buried here? Somebody needs to stop them. How many men are buried out there? You wouldn't even know, would you? It's crazy. They're, they're digging up bodies. That's murder they're talking about in there. And if they condone it, how are you going to turn around and tell these guys why they're locked up? Robert Redford, Brubaker. Welcome to the Bushwood Country Club. The membership's exclusive. You think I'd join this crummy snobatorium? The help is outrageous. <laughs> the madness is contagious. Bad language, fooling around in the course, poor caddying. What is this whole place? Caddy Shack, starring Chevy Chase as Ty Webb. Who is that disgusting man over there? A sportsman who really knows how to score. So what brings you to this uh, nape of the woods, neck of the wave? How come you're here? Rodney Dangerfield as Al Servant, a big shot. My thing is bigger than your whole boat! With an even bigger mouth. <laughs> Hey, somebody step on a duck. <laughs> Ted Knight as Judge Smales, a man of dignity <laughs> and a sense of fair play. I've sentenced boys younger than you to the gas chamber. Michael O'Keefe as Danny Noonan, a caddy who wants an education. 
and gets one. You take drugs, Danny? Every day. Good. Cindy Morgan as Lacey Underall. She's got a bad reputation, and she's working hard to keep it. You want to tie me up with some of your ties? Huh? And Bill Murray as Carl Spackler. Uh, just a harmless squirrel, not a plastic explosive or anything, nothing to be worried about. He's not crazy about gophers, <coughs> but he is crazy. License to kill gophers by the government of the United Nations. And introducing Mr. Gopher as himself. You got to give me a I said freeze, gopher! Caddyshack. It's all about swinging. Kiss me, you fool. But not on the course. Hey, you want to make $14 the hard way? Ah! Playing a good game. That's oh, he got all of that one. And talking a better one. Hey, I should have stayed home and played with myself. Taking shots. Ah! That was a bum shot. And making time. We couldn't possibly think less of each other. Controlling your drives. Wow! And losing your grip. Ah! It is! You! Out! Or the man's a menace! Caddyshack. The comedy with... Teams, war and pestilence. Are you ready for the end of time? Death and taxes. Responsibility is a heavy responsibility, man. Bad breath <laughs> and body odor. What, you the fast smell our fist? <laughs> and punk rock. <laughs> Comes Cheech and Chong. Go on, the race! They walk. They talk. <laughs> And now they make number two. I got nowhere to go. Well, go see a movie or something. Cheech and Chong's next movie. All right, this is the tape. Mark it. It's the film that spits when it sings. Hey, man. The film that never changes its underwear. The film that leaves a stain on the theater screen. Look dirty and filthy and deceased. We ain't dressed right. That's why I ain't getting no respect. When you go into these neighborhoods, man, you gotta have your stuff all together, man. You gotta have your attitude and your whole trip down, man. You know, everybody throws their bad looks at you, you know? Is it a love story? Take you all over for a dime. I'll keep it free, then. Is it a thriller? Oh, my. <laughs> Jake, come, you won't break them. Is it a musical? Treat me like a fool. Treat me mean and cruel. Is it a foreign film? Is it an alien attack? No! Oh. Oh, look at that! For the answers to these and other fundamental questions... D is that way. See Cheech and Chong's next movie. Come on, let's go, man. This looks like good fun. <laughs> because at a time like this, what everybody really needs is a good hit. Yeah, I don't think you better light it in here, man. Why? That's gas moves, man. Oh, man. Cheech and Chong's next movie. getting to be a woman going on 14. You know, the first time I ever seen you, I said me and that little old gal's gonna get together. I can't breathe. I feel like I'm gonna faint. Well, that's the way you're supposed to feel when you're in love. Mr. Ms. Webb, me and Loretta is fixing to get married. Promise me, boy. 
Don't you never hit her. Sorry, Loretta, but you drove me. I just need a little more time. You need a little more time to learn how to love your man the way you're supposed to. I do, are you leaving? There ain't nothing for me in Kentucky, Loretta. Except a chest full of coal dust and being an old man time I'm 40. I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> but maybe it'll turn to something that'll raise a Titanic someday. What'd you get me a guitar for? Because I like the way you sing. Have I? Could I tell? <laughs> you boys, stop fighting and listen to me sing. I love him still. Many nights I've laid. Brand new on the Zero label. Miss Lorene Lynn what? singing. It's Loretta. It's Loretta Lynn. So let's give a great big grand old Opry welcome to Miss Loretta Lynn. You're number 14 nationwide. I hate you. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome Miss Loretta Lynn. I'm getting run to death out there. I need somebody to take care of me. Woman, if you want to keep that arm, you better get it off of my husband. Make welcome, please. A young lady with 21 number one records, Miss Loretta Lynn. Baby, they're out there waiting on you now. You don't want to let them down. Don't tell me about letting them down. The first lady of country music, Miss Loretta Lynn. Things is moving too fast in my life. Dude, if it's going to break us up, I'll quit. Successful people don't quit, baby. Not much Would you like to disappear? Disappear? Go undercover. You know this man? Who's here? I'm here. You're here. These victims are all the same physical type. What about him, Skip? Late 20s, 140, 150 pounds. Dark hair, dark eyes. Have you ever seen him before? I want to send you out there to see if you can attract this guy. How where? A New York City detective in search of a killer is about to disappear into the night. Is it dangerous? I can't talk about it. How do you know you're going to end up the same person when it's over? An odyssey to the edge of city life. Bartenders are starting to give me some information. There's this uh, name keeps popping up all the time. There he is, the one with the hat. Is that the one that followed you? Yeah. Why didn't you go with him? I don't know. I think you should check him. Stone match. What he sees. Who's here? What he feels. I don't think I can do the job, Captain. I don't think I can handle it. I'm here. This is stuff going down. I don't think I can. Uh, I can deal with it. Yes! Yes! You here? What he experiences. Yes! What he discovers will change his life forever. Al Pacino. Who's here? I'm here. You're here. Cruising.
Do you find me attractive? Of course. Would you want to sleep with me? Yes. Then why don't you? Because I love my wife, and it isn't worth jeopardizing my marriage. I shouldn't have been so rude. Thank you for picking up. Mm. Brian De Palma, the master of the macabre, who shocked audiences everywhere with Sisters, Carrie, Obsession, and The Fury, now invites you to a showing of the latest fashion in murder. <coughs> dressed to Kill, Michael Caine, Angie Dickinson, Nancy Allen, Dressed to Kill, Murder, Made to Order. This is no Mickey Mouse school. You're not getting off easy because you're talented. You work twice as hard. Now, I don't care how well you dance or uh, how cute you are or how many colored tutus you have. If you don't give your academic subjects equal time, you're out. For Coco, it's the stardom. For Ralph, it's a chance. For Leroy, it's survival. For Lisa, it's the dance. Bruno, this is our big chance, man. Don't you want success? They've got nothing in common but a dream. So you want to be an actor, huh? Yeah, I sure want to be an actor. Judy, Judy, Judy. A dream that one day, the whole world will know their name. Because I'm going to be a dancer, a good dancer. You know who says so? Me. A dream of fame. Fame, it's the dream of instant success. I'll have $20,000 a week, I'll have a hit TV series, I'll have my face on the cover of TV Guide. And the constant reminder of failure. I don't think you'll ever be good enough, Lisa. But I don't know what I'll do if I can't dance. When I'm down and feeling blue. It's dedication. Dance is not a way of getting through school. It's a way of life. And frustration. <laughs> It's stage fright. Memories. And opening nights. Kids are into sex a lot earlier in the South Bronx. Like about 6 a.m. <laughs> if I ask you to hold me tight. It's love. Through a cold, dark night. It's pain. All anyone ever promised you was seven classes a day and a hot lunch. I It's contagious. You want to know what's happened to me, man? Success, all right? Now, you either hang on or you hang up. It's outrageous. It'll change your name. I'm becoming an actress. But I want you to be the Doris that I know. It'll change your life. I'll pay my dues on the West Coast. Come back to New York as a star. If they've really got what it takes, it's going to take everything they've got. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer presents an Alan Parker film. Fame.
ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Bob Newhart is the President. Who didn't get the souvenir pen with a Golden Boss presidential seal? Oh, the uh, Senator from Rhode Island. Gilda Radner is first daughter. I wish Dad were a streetcar conductor or something. Millions of people do, dear, but he's not. Madeline Kahn is first lady. First family of the United States. Bob Dishy is the vice president. Richard Benjamin is the presidential press secretary. Fred Willard is the president's special assistant. Rip Torn is chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Harvey Corman is our ambassador to the United Nations. Austin Pendleton is the president's translator. Which one of them is the head boogeyman? Which one of you is the chief turkey? First family. Remember when comedy was king? Now he's president. Clytus, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? An obscure body in the SK system, Your Majesty. The inhabitants refer to it as the planet Earth. I like to play with things a while before annihilation. Pathetic Earthlings! Who can save you now? Rush! Puerto Rican kid on the street? For Gloria, the danger is always getting closer. And getting closer is always the danger. Tony? Gloria? How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. And never mind where I am. Can you help me? Gloria, trust me. Maybe we can do something. Trust you? Hey, Tony, I know you. Where is the boy? May I touch you? May you touch my what? Here. Yeah. Where 
understand. You are a woman. He is a little boy. You fall in love. Every woman is a mother. You love him. I love Phil. Do you love me? How could I resist you? Body like yours. Pleasure to lie in bed with you. Hey, I don't like this kid. We need the boy. I'm gonna get up and walk out of here now. If you wanna stop me, you can. Like Cagney and Bogey and all those great tough guys. Now there is Gloria. A chick off the old block. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'd love it. Come on. Don't hang back. I'd love it. I got a six-year-old kid over there had his whole family murdered by you. Go ahead, Trent. Okay? You let a woman beat you, huh? You little tiny nothing. Jenna Rollins. You punk. Is Gloria. She's tough. But she sides with the little guy. Somewhere in the heart of this city, in a small shop closing for the night, a robbery is in progress. But help is on the way. Mind if I drop in? Captain Avenger! John Ritter is Steve Nichols. How about that? Hero at large. Who are you, J. Edgar Hoover? I'm Captain Avenger. Such a nice boy. He can't fly. Tomorrow I'm leaping over a tall building at a single bound. Wrong guy. I'm expanding. He can't bend steel. I'm in big trouble. Fighting crime is a dirty business. But when there's danger, he can't turn away. You're a crazy man. He dresses up in a comic book suit and goes around doing good deeds. Hold it right there. Don't make another move. If they're going to use real bullets, I think I'll retire. He's loved by women. I'm not always this easy. I bet you say that to all the girls. Cheered by men. They want their superhero and all he stands for to hold on to. And worshipped by children. Captain Avenger. Yes, sir. Let's see you fly. A hero's work is never done. He's nutty, but noble. I'm counting to three, Milo. Who the hell is that? This is Robert Redford. He's dizzy, but dedicated. People putting themselves on the line for other people. That's what being a hero is. But he's really just an actor who got carried away with a role. It's just like any other part. You gotta really get into it. Captain Avenger. Who sends you out on these missions anyway? Your agent? I took a third-rate movie, made it the biggest hit of the year with a simple gimmick. Captain Avenger comes to your neighborhood. Authorities are still wondering who the man in the red, blue, and yellow costume with a large A on his chest really is. It's me, Steve Nichols. All he knows about heroes is that people need one. Uh, yeah, I heard it a couple of times. All he could do was make himself hero at large. Well, I think it's really terrific. John Ritter, Ann Archer, Bert Convey, and Kevin McCarthy. Hero at large. At last, help is on the way. In concert, he is played to sold-out crowds wherever he has appeared. On record, he has sold more than 50 million copies. As a composer, he has written songs recorded by virtually every major star. And now, he brings his unique talents to the motion picture screen. In his first starring role, Neil Diamond is the jazz singer. The classic story of a man torn between family. Pop, I have things inside of me. I have to express them. I have my music. I have my life, my feelings. And fame. I just don't want to go through life thinking I could have been. Between what he is expected to do. You can change what has always been. I love my father. I'll never do anything to hurt him. But I'm going to L.A. With you or without you, I am going to L.A. And what he was born to do. Love on the rocks. It ain't no big surprise. Those are palm trees. 
Just call me a dream. Just welcome to California. My lies. Yesterday's gone. Now all I want is a smile. All right, one number scale, one song, two and a half minutes. Three. Two and a half. Oh, all right. Two and a half. All right, three. A fine new oh, young singing you. talent, Jess Robin. Hey, Mom, Jerry. If I take you home, will you make me bleed? Jess tells me you've been a great help to him. I mean, every time we talk, it's Molly did this and Molly did that. Will you close the door? Please forgive me, but 3,000 miles away, you begin to wonder if he's telling me everything Molly did. I'm not your problem, Rivka. That's your problem. Hello, my friend, hello. It's good to need you so. The jazz singer. It's good to love you like I do. The story of a man born to be a star. This way. When I hear you say And the woman who wanted to see him make it Hello A very special happening this Christmas Laurence Olivier Lucy Arnaz And Neil Diamond The Jazz Singer from AFD. John Carpenter's The Fog. This is KB Antonio Bay. Stevie Wayne here. And let me be the first to wish Antonio Bay a happy birthday. We're 100 years old today. And keep a watch out for that fog bank. Heading in from the east. One hundred years ago, between midnight and one, something unknown came out of the fog. Now it has returned. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> one hundred years ago, between midnight and one, something unnatural came out of the fog. Now it has returned. Years ago, between midnight and one, something evil came out of the fog. Now it has returned. Who's there? The fog. Antonio Bay has a curse on it. We're all cursed. Some no water got in here, but something awful cold did. I think I'll go to Vancouver now. Where's the fog now? Well, it should be right outside my door now. Oh, well, there's something different about this fog. Dan, stay away from the door! Someone listen to me! Get inside and lock your doors. Close your windows. There's something in the fog. Stay away from the fog. <laughs> from the creator of Halloween, the ultimate experience in terror and suspense. <laughs> John Carpenter's The Fog, starring Adrian Barbeau, Jamie Lee Curtis, John Houseman, Janet Lee as Kathy Williams, and Hal Holbrook as Father Malone. The fog. What you can't see won't hurt you. It will kill you. Between midnight and one, it will find you. I 
want to tell you about how I got married. Actually, it's a very romantic story. It's the quintessential deal. But first, you got to define the terms, agree on the principle, get the quid pro quos all nice and tidy. You know what I mean, sweetheart? Close down all the store and restaurant accounts. Cut off all the garages. He's rich. He's powerful. He adores me. And if I still want to, I can blackball anybody she tries to sell the apartment to. <laughs> sweetheart, I know you're ready to deal. So let's hear what you really want. <laughs> I'm telling you what I want. Oh, I really do love you. How do you get out of this place? What's your real bottom line? Alan King as the quintessential dealer. I can't live like this. I can't live in this squalor. Ali McGraw as the bottom line. I'm going to tell you something, Max, and I'm only going to say it once. I want... Get out! I want you. Hello. I want you to. <laughs> I want you to say you love me. Give romance a fighting chance. Just tell me what you want. Get this beautiful hair. Kmart. <laughs> so funny. And if we go to the bathroom here, if I can help it. Well, what do you do? Just hold it in. Stay away from liquids. Everyone knows that going to school is an education in itself. He wanted the dust. The gun's not the worst. It's the boogers that freak me out. One false move might wipe you out. <laughs> and any meal could be your last. I should know. My name is Clifford Peach. No one uses fruit. <laughs> and this is my story. You die every day for now, you got it. I'm not gonna pay. You got nerve, even if you ain't gonna live long. That was me before. Eat this. Hi, What's going on? Who are those guys? Just some kids from school who they wanna kill me. Hey, Shelly, wanna go to the movie tonight? Sure. Yeah, you have a real good time while you're there, huh? And this is me now. What made the difference? It wasn't my grandmother. Kick him in the cojones. That's the thing. It wasn't my father. I could call the principal again. It wasn't my enemies. You give me trouble. People don't do that around here. It was my bodyguard. You're dead. My bodyguard. A crazy idea. I'd like you to meet my bodyguard. Anything you want to say to me, talk to him first. That led to a great friendship. This is a story of hallway horror, mayhem after math class, and the most important lesson you can learn out of school. You know those things that stunt your growth. That strength has nothing to do with size and everything to do with courage. One of them was short, one of them was strange. Together, they were absolutely unbeatable. My Bodyguard. There's no place like heaven, it's the nicest. Oh, hello, hello, hello down there. This is God speaking. Yeah, God. Haven't heard from me lately, huh? Well, I've been keeping busy. By the way, I just finished a new movie. That's right, I made another movie. You know me, I just can't stop creating. The movie is called Oh God, Book Two, starring George Burns. He's funny. And it'll have just as many laughs as the first one, so you might want to mark it on your calendar. Now, I'm not saying that anybody who went to see God's first movie will fall out of favor if they don't see God's second movie. But why look for trouble? Oh God, Book Two, starring George Burns.
In this typical town, in this comfortable home, three ordinary people are about to live an extraordinary story. It's starting all over again. The lying, the covering up, the disappearing for hours. I will not stand for it. I can't stand it. I really can't. Yeah, psychiatrists are you. They all believe in dreams. I do believe in dreams. Only sometimes I want to know what's happening when you're awake. I don't want to see any doctors or counselors. This is my family. But if we have problems, then we will solve those problems in the privacy of our own home. Oh, I knew something was wrong even before he tried to uh, kill himself. I think it is a very private matter. You never came to the hospital. Now, how do you Conrad, know about the your hospital? Your mother did come to the hospital, Conrad, and you know that. I just don't know how to deal with it anymore. Why are you asking me, huh? Why are you trying to make me mad? Why are you mad? No! He provokes people. I would never have let him put electricity in my head. You blame me for the whole thing. Can't you see anything except in terms of how it affects you? I miss it sometimes. A hospital. But that was a hospital. This is the real world. Did it hurt? I've never really talked about it. How long are you going to punish yourself? When are you going to quit? You loved him. What in hell has happened? That she hates me. Can't you see that? Mothers don't hate their sons. I mean, there's someone besides your mother you gotta forget. You better make sure that your kids are good and safe. Ah! And then you come to me and tell me how to be happy. Do you love me? Do you really love me? Ah! Just do one wrong thing. Fuck me! And what was the one wrong thing you did? Donald Sutherland, Mary Tyler Moore, Judd Hirsch. Timothy Hutton in an extraordinary story of ordinary people. Personally, baby. You're a baby. It says here, right there, right. Robin Williams. <laughs> Shelley Duval. You're in Popeye. Get away! Olive, Olive, forgive me, Olive. I said fui, and I mean fui. <laughs> I was a skinny, frightened lad, no more than 17. The sorriest excuse for a man that you have ever seen. But now I am a thorn bird and as proud as I can be. Colonel Thornbush made a man of... This ring is a symbol that you are my husband. This ring is a symbol that you are my husband. I want to give you two a little something for mother and me, just to bring you a little extra happiness. This is Judy Benjamin. Oh, my oh, That's for the future, not Lord and Taylor. Oh, All her life, she got everything she ever wanted and a few things she didn't. Uh, I did join the army, but I joined a different army. Uh, I joined the one with the condos and the private rooms. <laughs> no, really, my, my, my recruiter, Jim Ballard, told me I don't me care, that... I don't care what your lousy recruiter told you, Benjamin. Now, I'm telling you, there is no other army. Excuse me. <laughs> 
Is green the only color these comments? Come on, move it, Benjamin. I don't want to see you stop running unless you collapse. Faint or puke. Has anybody ever died from basics? Personally, I think you've gone temporarily insane. That's what we told everyone. He said that you'd, uh, you'd, you'd had a collapse and, and uh, you were in a mental home. People think I'm in a mental home? Mm. I want to wear my sandals and I, w I want to go out to lunch. I want to be normal again. I just can't believe that you were in this army. <laughs> well, if I knew you better, I'd show you my dog tags. How much better? Glory, glory, I'll be falling through the sky. Glory, glory, I am not afraid to die. Glory, glory, I'm as proud as I can be. Colonel Cornbush made a man out of me. Glory, glory, I'll be Goldie falling Hawn through the sky. Goldie Hawn is Private Benjamin. Glory, glory, I am not afraid to die. Arrangements, final preparations, and last minute phone calls. Nick? Wendy, do you still like to play games? Oh. They're too old for games, but someone still wants to play. There's no one else around who wants to fight me. They're all afraid. There's a lot of bad things, Joey. Maybe it's coming back to me.
isolated sector of our solar system, suspended in orbit around the sixth planet from our sun, lies a distant outpost, a technologically perfect world where mistakes are impossible, because the impossible is unthinkable. It is called Saturn III. Each year for 22 days, a solar eclipse plunges this outpost into shadow lock. Total darkness. All communication is terminated. This year, the inhabitants of Saturn III are about to experience the unthinkable. A nightmare so perfect it could only have been made by man. Captain, Major, this is my partner. There are only four inhabitants on Saturn III. One of them is not human. Said, well spoken. This is the story of a lawyer and her husband, the district attorney. They offered me the attorney general spot. Oh, what a wonderful surprise. You want another one? Mm -hmm. Your ex-husband robbed a bank. This is also the story of her ex-husband, a writer. I don't get it. And two thugs. This cleared up for you? No, I'm afraid not. You see, I'm blind. And a bank. Hi, can I help you? Yes, you can and a stick-up. Read it, it's self-explanatory. What do I do? I don't know, let's take a look. Stick up, put all your money in the bag, one more sound and you're dead. God bless you. And a getaway. I was wondering if I could quit the gang. If the man wants out, let him out. And when Neil Simon brings them all together, it seems like old times. Did you rob that bank? Sort of. What do you mean, sort of? I did, but I did enjoy it. I don't believe it. You can believe it? Oh, sh Our wedding pictures didn't turn out that good. It's part Chevy Chase. You know, the last thing in the world I want to do is hurt you. I'm putting you in any jeopardy. I'll leave right now. I'm okay. Part Goldie Hawn. Hi! Oh, where did he come from? If I was a stray dog, this is the first place I'd come to. Part Charles Grodin. They're getting off. Come on. Come on, get down. Why am I always the last one in the neighborhood to get into bed with you? Put them all together. Hold it right there. You're under arrest. Police are on their way. Didn't like the chicken, huh? <laughs> And it's the funniest Neil Simon ever. How are you gonna kidnap us if I'm the one driving the car? If I'm the one holding the gun. I buy that. If you're innocent, they'll never send you to jail. Is that how it works, Chester? Not in my neighborhood. <laughs> Seems like old times. A comedy what are you doing? for Christmas. I want quiet in the sports. <laughs> This here is Sheriff Buford.
the Chief Justice. I'm sure you all recall how I went after a fella by the CB name of Bandit and almost lost my head. Daddy, the top came off. No. Some of you less respectable citizens may even snigger when you recall that I never caught that kick. Well, I got news for you. The bandit is back. Now, before you go getting all worked up about it, let me reassure you people, there ain't no way he's gonna make a fool out of Buford T. Justice this time. Why didn't you have your gun loaded? When I put bullets in it, Daddy, it gets too heavy. This time, folks, he's bitten off more than he can chew. He's taking on a cargo that proves he's gotten too big for his britches. Oh, Enjoy my life. I can turn them on, but I can't turn them off. And if he thinks he can sneak two tons of pregnant pachyderm onto my nose, <laughs> he's got another thing coming. Ha <laughs> ha. Now we got him in the biggest that is trapped ever. Cause this time I got help. Two of the most brilliant and respected lawmen on the road today. My two brothers, Gaylord and Reggie. Well, if I can keep and it don't matter where he goes. It don't matter what it tries to pull. My brothers and I give you our solemn vow. We're gonna barbecue his... Come on, Trigger! Don't let me down now! Universal Pictures presents Burt Reynolds, Jerry Reed, Sally Field, Don DeLuise, Jackie Gleason, Jackie Gleason, Jackie Gleason, and Charlotte in Smokey and the Bandit Part 2. The movie that proves once again... It's not what's in your trunk that counts. It's who's on your tail. The Star Wars Saga continues with a special limited engagement of The Empire Strikes Back, starting November 19th. Strikes Back, returning to your galaxy, November 19th. I hereby sentence you to serve 125 years. What? What? Have you got the right case? Columbia Pictures presents Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. Should I have a hand over for listening to you? Together again in Stir Crazy. <laughs> I can't feel nothing in my life. One's a little too good. That's Grossberger. The biggest mass murder in the history of the Southwest. Nobody has ever just sat down and honestly talked with that man. Hello. Hey! <laughs> One's not quite bad enough. They got this Korean doctor just set foot in this country. Make sure you don't get him. 
That's right. He's the one made the mistake on me. Korea. <laughs> How do you go? That's the cat did me. Could you actually become involved, I mean romantically, with a prisoner? Absolutely not. Oh, I didn't think so. Excuse me, will you? I'll come with you. Oh, sh Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor in Stir Crazy. Only these two guys could dress up like woodpeckers and get framed for robbing a bank. Stir Crazy. That's right, that's right, we're bad. Uh, uh. Imagine all the possibilities if the whole world was just like me. wasn't a worse way to grow up. Don't panic. It's a bushwhack. There was Griff, Vinci, Zan, and Johnson. And then there was the sergeant. He made the patch they wore on their shoulders. He made the big red one. Do you know what they call you four guys? Sergeant's four horsemen. This is the big red one. Combat rejects sure know how to lay down fire. Vinci. Oh. Hey, hey, for how much? Johnson. Oh. I think I'd like the most Johnson, beautiful. Johnson, you're going to deliver a baby. What baby? Let's go. This is the incredible story that Samuel Fuller has waited 35 years to tell. These are the boys of the Big Red One. They're not boys anymore. A wooden ship. Fire! A fire at sea. Up you go! Yeah and two young children are cast adrift. Fortune washes them ashore on a fertile isle. But fate deserts them, and they are left utterly alone. The years passed, but no ship ever did. Yet the boy and the girl grew strong and tall and beautiful, raising themselves on instinct in the bounty of their lost paradise. But this was no Eden. Richard! Em! Em, where are you? <laughs> there were mysteries at work here, disturbing and compelling. The one mystery lay on the forbidden side of the island, dark, sinister, killing. The other mystery was hidden deeper still, what are you doing, Richard? Within this girl, now woman, this boy, now man, the mystery of desire. She sees that his shoulders are wide. She senses there is one secret here she doesn't know. What are you looking at? Your muscles. And something inside her stirs. 
feel so funny in my stomach. Me too. My heart's beating so fast. Mine too. Columbia Pictures presents a sensuous story of natural love, starring Brooke Shields and introducing Christopher Atkins. The Blue Lagoon. better get bright, pal. We got a show to do. Then we got to figure out some way to collect that gate money. Get it to the Cook County Assessor's office as soon as they open in the morning. Joliet, Jake, and Elwood Blues. Two men with a mission. And only 11 days. Don't come back until you've redeemed yourselves. Oh, our Lady of Blessed Acceleration, don't fail me now. Me and the Lord, you got an understanding. We're on a mission from God. Lots of space in this mall. Not in it, think. Mind will let yourself be free. People walking around every day playing games and taking scores. How are you going to raise $5,000 in 11 days without ripping off somebody? Dance to the jailhouse rock. 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 Jailhouse rock. Jailhouse rock. I remain celibate for you. Hit it. My heart's calculating, my true love will be waiting. If my estimations are correct, we should be very close to the Honorable Richard J. Daly Plaza. That's where they got that Picasso. Yep. Two guys come in here, black suits, black hats, one carrying a briefcase? Yeah, I just sent them down there. Thank you. John Belushi. You, how much for your wife? <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. After the gig, uh, maybe we could, like, uh, hang out together. James Brown. I heard the sound in my car. Cab Calloway. Holy, 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 oh. Ray Charles. You, you know depreciation, man. Carrie Fisher. I must now kill you and your brother. Aretha Franklin. You're living with me now, and you're not gonna go sliding around with your old white woman friends. Henry Gibson. 
He better pray the police get to him before we do. And the Blues Brothers Band. Let's go, boys. The Blues Brothers. Are you the police? No, ma'am. We're musicians. The competition. The most important moment in their lives. When winning... Hey! ...isn't everything. Tell me you're not entered. I'm entered. You're so bloody good. You have no time for her. And you also do not remember me, and I'm now feeling very foolish. You have no time for her. Did you have an itch for me? Nope. I think you did, and I think you possibly still do. That is your first husband. That you, you marry it. You cleave to it. Because it gives your life a center that no man, that very few men can possibly give you. Have you ever heard of competitive edge? in which one looks for ways to dislike one's opponents. There are some things that aren't meant to be shared, and this is one of them. They broke the cardinal rule of the competition. They fell in love. Okay. So what I really feel about you and me is that we are a corporation. Now, if you win, great. If I win, better. <laughs> and if neither of us wins, then the hell with it, but the corporation goes on. If you're really in love, nothing's going to stand in your way. Richard Dreyfus, Amy Irving, Lee Remick, The Competition. silent, unresisting target for your ridicule. Stand up. Stand up! Turn around! Mister, why is your head so big, mister? <laughs> but if you come to know him... Have you always been the way you are now? You will begin to see beyond the perversion of his form. Are you in any pain? Are your parents still alive? Your father? Your mother? And discover the beauty in the beast. He is English. He is 21. His name is John Merrick. At no time have I met with such a perverted or degraded version of a human being as this man. Am I to assume then that he is ultimately incurable? Yes, sir. This hospital doesn't accept incurables. The freak hunting. This is monstrous. If you ask my opinion, he's only being stared at all over again. People pay money to see your monster, Mr. Treves. I'll collect it. Yada, monster, yada. Freak. What was it all for? Why did I do it? And perhaps for the first time, you will understand the true meaning of courage and human dignity. I am not an animal. I am a human being. You are not an elephant man at all. You're Romeo. Anthony Hopkins, Anne Bancroft, Sir John Gielgud, Wendy Hiller, and John Hurt as The Elephant Man. Coming from Paramount Pictures.
on board the USS Nimitz, the most advanced nuclear supership in the American arsenal, carrying a complement of 102 aircraft and 6,000 men. The Nimitz is on routine duty, guarding the waters of the South Pacific. That force here is in real trouble. Stand by to ring the bell. But within minutes, a bizarre, unexplainable phenomenon of nature will transport the Nimitz 40 years back in time. Back to the day of infamy. Back to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is the cap. I'm speaking to every man aboard this ship. The storm has had some effect on time, as we know it. It, it created a portal. A door into another era. Today is December the 7th, 1941. We're about to fight a battle that was lost before most of you were born. This time, God's help is going to be different. There are forces in the universe which we're only now just beginning to understand. There are black holes in space, antimatter, curved space. Things that are as strange to us as electricity would have been to people in the Middle Ages. Holy cow. The whole Japanese fleet. Our reconnaissance plane has just taken pictures of something that hasn't existed for over 40 years. What have you got? Two Japanese zeros, sir. Splash the zero. What's happening here? Who are you people? Why don't you tell him what's going on here, Commander? You're an expert on what's going to happen tomorrow. Why don't you tell him about it, for God's sakes? Go on, tell him. We got nothing to lose. Welcome to the paradox of time, when past and present become one, and history is actually changed. We've got an incredible opportunity here. We know where all the mistakes are going to be made for the next 40 years, and you've got the power to correct them. The final countdown. For more than 40 years, the most important discovery of this century has been kept secret. These two men know why. MGM presents George C. Scott, Marlon Brando, in The Formula. They will meet during the investigation of a bizarre murder, when evidence of the formula mysteriously reappears. Genesis turns out to be something the Nazis considered very top secret. And whatever it is, it's still in Germany. In a world starved for energy, no secret is more important than the formula. And nothing is more dangerous than knowing it. What did Genesis stand for? Synthetic fuel. George C. Scott. You trade lives and human dignity for profit. Marlon Brando. Money, not morality, is the principal commerce of civilized nations. You're not in the oil business, you're in the oil shortage business. I wish some way I could nail you. And Marta Keller. Just following orders, right? Yes. Right into bed, right? I don't see how you can make love to someone. And then two minutes later, Pump seven slugs into his body. If I were in the murder business, that'd blow your brains all over that Venetian line back there, right here, right now. In the motion picture thriller from the best-selling novel by Steve Shagan. The people will accept the 12 cents now because we can blame it on the Arabs. Arthur, you're uh, missing the point. We are the Arabs. 
George C. Scott, Marlon Brando, and Marta Keller. The formula. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have your attention, please? I'm the advertising man for a very funny new movie called The Hollywood Nights. Come on. Now, now wait a minute. We got a problem with the coming attractions. Hey, come on, will you? Give me a break. I'm on your side. The problem is they won't let me show you any of the good stuff. And believe me, it's really good. Like they won't let me show you what this Hollywood night peeping Tom with a Polaroid's taking pictures of. And I definitely can't show you what the cheerleader in the middle forgot to wear. But believe me, it raised more than a few eyebrows. This Hollywood night just did something really humiliating. You are so immature. I am not immature. But can I show you what it was? No way. You'll just have to guess why the heavyweight in the horn rims is having an attack, or why the cop is in the can and not on his beat. Get back, Bimbo! Or what's really being barbecued in the burning bag, or what the Hollywood Knights put in the punch to give it such a special tang. I've had this taste in my mouth before. No, they won't let me show you any of the really good stuff. But I can tell you that the movie shows everything. Look, we're all in our underwear. The Hollywood Nights is hysterically funny. Take it from me. Would I lie to you? It's a masterpiece. It's wild, it's sexy, it's outrageous, it's revolting. <laughs> and so are the Hollywood Nights. But they're not just a movie. They're about as nice a bunch of guys you'd ever want to know. Good, clean American kids fighting for truth, justice, and anything they can get away with. I'll kill you! I'll kill all of you! Parents groups are trying to stop them. The cops are trying to annihilate them. And only you can help. Force your way into the theaters. Save the Hollywood Knights. They do the same for you. They knocked my pants off. Steve McQueen is level-headed. He's eagle-eyed. Two-fisted. A tower of strength. He's not as fast as he used to be. That's what makes him human. But he is the hunter. That's what makes him dangerous. Mr. Thorson is a bounty hunter. Sheriff wants to see you. Now. Now look, Sheriff, I've come over 1,500 bucks. Goodbye, Mr. Thorson. Bye, Sheriff. Steve McQueen is the hunter. The true story of Ralph Thorson. A man who's just as soft-hearted as he is hard-headed. But he's not a cop. He's America's last bounty hunter. Where'd he come from? The courts have given him the right to go anywhere. They may pursue principal into another state. And use any means. If necessary, may break it into his home. To bring criminals back to justice. Yeah. Thorson, I'm gonna kill you. But now, someone he went after is coming after him. You remember how to shoot this, right? Yeah. Okay, it's got a full clip. Bang, 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 bang. Okay. Assault, attempted murder, armed robbery. A very bad boy. 
No, he's a good boy. He's a little mixed up, maybe. And he's a shooter, too. He really wants to come in. You'll see how happy he'll be to see you. You'll talk, you'll make friends. There's not a criminal he goes after that he doesn't bring back. One way. Or another. Unless they can get to him first. Steve McQueen is the hunter. The Caribbean. A vacationer's paradise. And yet this region was once a stronghold for outcasts, thieves, and murderers. A savage race that vanished hundreds of years ago. But what if there were survivors? And what if they kept their existence a secret from the outside world? What if someone found out? The island where civilization as we know it has taken a bizarre turn. Who are you? I mean, all of you. Are, are you some kind of religious cult? If I'd wanted to hit you, I could have hit you. How dare you speak to your father like that? You're not my father. Stop this, make believe. Fire! Pirates? I know it sounds crazy, but you better believe me. All those who have discovered the island have never been seen again. The Island. The super thriller from the author of Jaws and the Deep. Find the mainland man. Cut his throat. The most terrifying thing in the water is the island. They were nine men. They were four families of brothers. They rode together from Missouri to Minnesota and from Texas to Tennessee. They were the most famous outlaw heroes of the West. They were known as the Long Riders. This is their story, and it's as close to the truth as legends can ever be. Now you don't give us no trouble, mister. I want your sons, Mr. Samuel. What do you want them for? For robbing banks and trains, ma'am. What do you think your chances are of bringing them in? It's an amazingly stupid question. Wait for them to come out. People say they got one of the youngers. People say they got the wrong younger. You men did an excellent job of making heroes out of every one of those gentlemen. I think I'll write me a book. Make myself even more famous than I am. You ever been alone? Excuse me, miss. I was wondering if you cared to dance. I'd be delighted. Coming back for you. We're gonna be meeting up real soon. They got a real fat bank up there. Scouted it out myself. Northfield. You open that safe, mister, you hear? The picket had told us he might be coming. You're robbing the bank! David, Keith, and Robert Carradine is Cole. Jim and Bobby Younger. James and Stacy Keach is Jesse and Frank James. Dennis and Randy Quaid is Clell and Ed Miller. Christopher and Nicholas Guest is the Ford brothers. Riders. The 
quaint village of St. Mary Mead, England, home of Agatha Christie's extraordinary sleuth, Miss Marple, is in for some excitement. Hollywood has invaded, and a great American star is about to make a comeback. But she's not the only one. A little bit closer, please, ladies. When massive doses of ego... Lola, dear, you know there are really only two things I dislike about you. Really? What are they? Your face. Mix with lethal traces of poison. There's no business like show business. Harvey! It's Arena. poison! Somebody's trying to kill me, aren't they? Aren't they? I know it! I, I can... can feel it. I can almost hear them coming. Danger in the dark. <laughs> MGM 1932. Against such rave performances, even two of the world's greatest detectives are baffled. Murder is a very dangerous business. If one gets mixed up in it, one must be prepared for the consequences. In fact, they hardly stood a chance. Until the moment, the mirror cracked. Of course. He always did have the class of a toad. And he's putting up the money for your comeback, so you'd better calm down. And putting that peroxide floozy into my film, and as the Virgin Queen. Maybe we should bring in Alexander for my hair. Lamb chop, if I told you once, I told you a thousand times, Queen Elizabeth was bald. Not in this movie, she ain't. The idea of someone wanting to murder your wife doesn't bother you? You've been seeing too many Charlie Chan movies, Inspector. We'll be together always. Till death do us part. Why'd you say that? Elizabeth Taylor, Tony Curtis, Kim Novak, Edward Fox, Rock Hudson, Geraldine Chaplin, and Angela Lansbury as Miss Marple. It's very simple. If only one looks at it the proper way. Agatha Christie's mystery classic. The mirror cracked. If you guess who done it, you may be next. The world of the cinema, the village, it's all quite the same, really. She could be wrong, you know. She's not. I've seen the picture. The mirror cracked. The snake-eyed son of a... <laughs> No one will admit they still exist. Efficient killers who work in silence, secrecy, darkness, unholy masters of terror by magic. The man he once called brother is now his deadly enemy. <laughs> He must find the strength to become everything he hates. I wanted you because you could succeed. I need your help. The professional who wants targets. If you saw ninjas, you're seeing ghosts. <laughs> An heiress okay. who wants revenge. I want to know who they are. I know who they are. Everybody wants something from him. A prisoner of his own destiny. He will find freedom only one way.
In 1903, one of the last great American heroes alive was Tom Horn. During this time, a special breed of men evolved. Tom, see that the rustling gets stopped. $200 for every rustler that goes somewhere else to fly his trade. Rugged individuals who lived by a special code of honor. I tell you what, Horn, I'm going to kill you. I'll just take it between us, it's who gets who first. There won't be no more cow stolen. Not from the Wood River Cattle Company, the Bar 3 Cattle Company, or the Haley Cattle Company. Consider that my last word in the matter. They became heroes. Man of the West, Indian tracker. They became legends. What was it like out in Indian territory? Lonely as hell. And then, they were gone. But when great heroes were no longer needed, Tom Horn would not go quietly. Steve McQueen is Tom Horn, who became a legend. cook a meal once in a while and, and clean up, make good love to him. Look, I know that's good, okay? But that ain't enough. So when are you gonna take me home? Hmm? Whenever you get ready. I'm ready right now. Come on. I gotta tell my girlfriends I'm going. Got myself a cowboy. See y'all later. Oh, you... Who's that? My wife. She'd ever crumble and fall. And the mountains should fall. To cowboy. To the sea. And all that that implies. John Travolta, Urban Cowboy. Hidden deep within the snow-shrouded Rockies, a fearsome creature is now awake and hungry. Ah! Oh, he's mine. Got a 
a grip, Thompson. He is gathering his awesome powers for one final assault upon an unsuspecting world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, meet Dr. Hunter S. Thompson, the legendary outlaw journalist. What are you doing? Give me my answers. If you what? dare. Yeah, okay. okay. Great answers, huh? What? 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 What, what do you want to know? Where am I? You're at your hotel, man. They broke the mold before he was born. Uh. Bill Murray is the outrageous, the infamous, the totally glorious uh. Dr. Hunter uh. S. Thompson. You know, I, I hate to advocate drugs or liquor, violence, insanity to anyone. But in my case, it's worked. <laughs> Be proud, man. You're becoming a famous writer. The famous Dr. Gonzo. Here is where the buffalo roam. Buffalo, took you so long. Jeez, what a nightmare here. As your attorney, I advise you to leave this room at once. You find him. He owes me a cover story and I want to get it. Homeboy to T1. Homeboy to T1. Dang it. Ghost Riders, Atticus Prophets. Fire, blood, revolution! Ah! Was he a gun collector? You gotta write a story. I need your help. They gotta struggle. You should be part of it. Come on! You left on Tuesday. Today's Saturday. That's weird. The same mix-up happened to me this morning. I thought it was Tuesday. Saturday. Everybody else is here. Abiga! Buckja! Pet! Deeper, deeper, deeper! You better get down the hallway over there and throw a muzzle over that fruitcake. Scream all! Ah! Nixon. Oh, oh, he's never no, he's never liked this. It's incredible. If you have a taste for total destruction, behold the invincible Gonzo Warrior. Thompson! Thompson! This is a travesty of justice! As he takes on truth. Forecast is for bad craziness. Justice. You're off this campaign for good right now. Give me your credentials. Give them to me, Thompson, right now. And the American way. Write about it. Tell the world. Tell them the truth. In the land where the buffalo roam. You psychotic. You've done it to me again. But you do your own good. You don't belong here. You all know the story of Moses. Well, this is the story of Herschel, who floated down the Nile with Moses. He might have had Moses' job, but he just didn't have the right connections. Dudley Moore. I am the God of Abraham. I am. I, I, I'd have to hear him a few more times before I got him down pat. Lorraine Newman. <laughs> James Coco. Oh, no, 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 slay me instead. Uh, listen, now, he has a point. Yes, yes. Paul Sand. <laughs> High time. Jack Guilford. <laughs> oh, oh, I wouldn't have hit him there. Dom DeLuise. That's <laughs> right. Herschel. Let's have lunch. John Houseman. We go with fire. Brimstone. Madeline Carr. Hello? The way the sun's glistening through your hair. Bow! David L. Lander. Um, I will make you see again. Don't blow it. Richard Pryor. The man was phenomenal! What, are you kidding me? He split the Red Sea in half! I mean, zip down the middle, keep your cover quick, and no excuses. John Ritter. Man gives in to temptation freely enough without any help from me. Thank you very much. After 3,000 years, the story can at last be told of the simple shepherd who tried to put out the burning bush. Holy Moses. Gigantic. Inspiration.
Open your eyes and hear the magic. Universal Pictures announces the most dazzling romantic musical fantasy in years. Xanadu. Starring Olivia Newton-John. Michael Beck. And Gene Kelly. Xanadu. It's a love story about a boy and girl from two very different worlds, whom no one can keep apart. It's a spectacular entertainment that will transport you beyond your dreams. Xanadu. Where time stops and the magic never ends. Xanadu. Century Fox presents a tribute to anyone who has ever been overworked, underpaid, and pushed to the edge by an ungrateful boss. <laughs> promptly at nine because if they're not on time they know they'll get the sack but before they begin the daily grind the boss takes his cup black 
they remember each date, make sure he's not late, and keep everything organized. They reserve tables for brunch or a three martini lunch while they dine on burgers and fries. This road. They listen to all his problems. They do their best to please. And even if they run the show, he gets paid for their ideas. Great work. And so long as he's alive from nine to five, they'll take it all they can. This road. Come in here. But what will go on when the light finally dawns? that it's time to get back at that man. Jane Fonda. Lily Tomlin. And Dolly Parton. Nine to five. It has been called the most controversial motion picture of its time. It is the most talked about and written about film of the decade. Now, from the director of The Deer Hunter, United Artists presents Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate. The story of Jim Averill. He was born into the world of the rich and powerful, but his heart and dreams were with the people. Heaven's Gate, the story of a man's love for a woman, for a people, for a land, for a spirit that would never die. Chris Christopherson in Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate. Richard Collier is about to begin an incredible journey into another realm, another lifetime, in search of the love he could never find in this one. That's Elise McKenna. Starred in a play in the hotel theater. When was this play done? 1912. Dr. Finney, is time travel possible? That is a question. Arthur? Arthur? You're the only one who can help me. Is it you? Is he the one, William? Walk with me. Please. Collier, I know who you are. You came to destroy her. story of the link between a man and a woman, a link that goes beyond fantasy, beyond time itself. Universal Pictures is proud to present Christopher Reeve, Jane Seymour, Christopher Plummer, Somewhere in Time. Someday in the past he will find her. 